So you've got a massive project in Logic Pro X and it's slowing down, you've got CPU overload and you don't know what to do. So first of all, you wanna to go to Logic Preferences Audio and within that audio, you've got these options here that come up as default. Now, the IO buffer size, this is the major player here. You've got six options and each of those will drastically improve or reduce the performance of your system. When you first open it up, chances are it's going to be on 128. If you're trying to record someone, you want the lower number as possible in order to get as low a latency as possible. Now, if you've got a large track that you're mixing, you can slow that right down. I would argue if you're not putting any input into it, say you're not playing anything on a keyboard, go straight for 1024. So if you're like me and you compose things, then you've got to try and find the middle ground. So you can start off with 128 as your system slows down, you slow down the buffer size to 256. As it slows down more, you can go to 512 and 1024. The issue this incurs though, is that if you've got, say, a musical keyboard that you're playing in, then as you press the button on 1024 buffer size, you've got a noticeable delay of a few hundred milliseconds of latency. You can get used to this, and I believe I have. I don't really have any problems playing in at that sort of buffer size, but it also means that you really can't be completely accurate to the beat. So that's the first place I would look for when you've got CPU overload issues. So the processing threads is talking about how the CPU is being used within your system. So I've got eight cores within my CPU. It's normally set on automatic. Now I want Logic to use as much power as possible all of the time. So I'm going straight for eight. If you've got something running in the background, say Chrome, which takes up quite a lot of power, Maybe you want to hang back and go for six to give it a bit more space. However, I prefer eight straight through. Process buffer range. That is very similar to the IO buffer size, but it's a bit more internal. Again, the higher the option, i.e. medium is going to be worse than small, large is going to be worse than medium, the more latency you're going to get. Like I said, I go straight for large. Multi-threading. Now, what that does is it's talking about how the CPU is used very much like processing threads, but how all of those threads are used simultaneously. So I'll explain it a bit better. If we double click up here, you can see how many cores I've got in my system. You can see all eight going across. If I set my multi-threading to playback tracks alone, then what it would do is any input that's coming into the system would be pushed into one single core, one of these bars of my CPU. This probably used to work better on older systems when you had less CPUs to work with, sorry, less cores to work with, but nowadays computers are more efficient and you can select playback and live tracks. So what that does is it enables your CPU to spread that load over multiple cores as opposed to on a single one. I've got eight cores, therefore it's far more efficient if I use the multi-threading as playback and live tracks. Now, the final thing that I'm gonna say is if you've got all this going on and you've used the most amount of latency you can and you're composing like me, sometimes you really want to be accurate with the timing or accurate with somebody singing in through the input. In which case, you can leave all those settings as it is, go up to record, click low latency mode. And so what that does is it temporarily turns off any plugins or any inefficient items you've got on your tracks in order to optimize the amount of latency that your system is causing. It makes a considerable difference, especially when you've got your IO buffer size so high, but it reduces the sound quality. So once you're done recording, if you want to hear it come back to its normal tone and normal sound with all its plugins running all at the same time, turn off low latency mode. As you'll see, the tick will vanish. So I hope that helped. I will be doing more videos with little tips and tricks in Logic Pro X as time goes on, as I discover them. So if you've got any questions about anything, or if you have a suggestion for what topic or video to do on Logic Pro X, just put a comment below and hopefully I'll get to it in the near future. In any case, I shall see you in the next video.